Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well, I hope you've, uh, I don't want to say recovered from last night, but um, for those that found the nil-nil draw against Sevilla a little bit boring, I can understand and I hope you've recovered from that, so if that's any consolation then okay, but let's roll with it, what has happened, what has happened, and this came out before yesterday's game, but I, I couldn't mention it in my match review. If not, I would have been there talking about everything for about 25 minutes. So, you know, I thought, let me do a video on it today. Um, and it's, it's, it's bizarre. If 2020 couldn't get any weirder, well, now it has. Now, before I get into everything, I do want to ask you guys, if you are new, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. We have hit 40,000 subscribers on this new channel, which has been out for what? Three months. Honestly, I thank you all so, so much. I really love the fact that you're enjoying the content. It's so positive. Your comments in the comment section are sublime. Your support has been unreal. Uh, your uh, following across all platforms has been immense. So honestly, thank you all so much. Onwards and upwards, 50k here we come. And soon, 100k is going to happen. I know it will. I trust you guys. And together, we can make it happen. So I honestly want to say thank you all so much. 40k. It's amazing. Let's roll on and try and get to 50. Now, let's get into what's happened. Um, as I've said, 2020 couldn't get any weirder. Petr Cech. Petr Cech, who um, left Chelsea as a legend, right? And then went to Arsenal because, you know, if Big Pete is happy, then we're happy. That is what we were saying when he went to Arsenal, even though we didn't quite like it. But um, he wanted to stay in London. He wanted to play Champions League football. The only team at that time that could have done that, aside from Chelsea, was Arsenal. So Arsenal took him and he accepted. And um, yeah, that's safe to say he done all right. Um, he won what? He won an FA Cup. Well, you know, beating us. But um, yeah, he won an FA Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, for Arsenal, he wasn't as great as he was for us. Nowhere near. Let's be honest. For Chelsea, he's a legend. For Arsenal, he's a goalkeeper that they once had and they respect. That's pretty much it. But straight after his time at Arsenal ended, he came back to Chelsea. But this time, not as a player. He had retired from professional football. He had come back to Chelsea in the capacity of um, technical performance advisor or performance technical advisor or something like that. But anyway, that's the title they gave him. They, they made up a position, right, just to fit him in. But basically, his role is to be the man to analyse the team and be the go-to between team and board. He is the middleman. And it's a junior position. So then he can, in the near future, progress to being a member of the board or being a director or, you know get into that status but because he's new to the whole thing the position he's in now is a good stepping stone and it's a good role to train in so he came back to Chelsea in that capacity um and now he's working with Frank Lampard to help the team you know progress to what it is and working alongside Marina Granovskaya in making deals happen and identifying targets and it's worked out pretty nicely but now Things have kind of taken a turn. <laughs> the most unexpected thing has happened. Sky Sports, uh, um, weirdly enough, I'm saying Sky Sports and not Fabrizio Romano, but Sky Sports, take it away. Breaking. Chelsea have named retired goalkeeper Petr Cech in their Premier League squad. Petr Cech is back. <laughs> Petr is back, yes. Now, uh, I know some of you are going to get carried away. Some of you are thinking he's going to play next week. No, 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 no. Let, let's give you the lowdown on what has actually happened. Yeah, what has happened. And um, it's bizarre, but it's very good precaution taken by Chelsea Football Club. So basically, what has happened is this. Chelsea have named retired goalkeeper Petr Cech in their 25-man Premier League squad as emergency cover. The surprise inclusion of the 38-year-old, who works as the club's technical and performance advisor, has been described by Chelsea as a precautionary step due to the unprecedented conditions currently caused by the COVID-19 crisis. Basically, Chelsea needed to submit a 25-man squad. We done just that. But on top of the 25, we have added Petr Cech. So we technically submitted a 26-man squad. But Petr Cech has been included in that 25-man squad as the 26th member as a non-contracted player. So 
it's an authorization that if something happens to Kepa, Willy Caballero, Edouard Mendy, who is now our number one goalkeeper, but in the most unprecedented circumstance, right, on the off chance that we all get struck by lightning, right, God forbid, touch wood, uh, <laughs> or all of us win the lottery, yeah, if all three end up getting COVID or, or they end up being absent or whatnot, then we have a goalkeeper to turn to. Basically, that is what it is. We, we, if we're left with no goalkeeper, we don't need to do what we done in 2004 and call John Terry to fill in. No, no, we don't need to do that. We've got better check. And what's crazy enough, two little facts I want to tell you guys. He's training. It's not that he's not involved in training whenever, you know, Chelsea are, are at Cobham and they're training. He trains with the team. He is training with Mendy, Kepa and Willy Caballero. There's four goalkeepers training there and he is one of them. And when you look at the training footage, like the footage before we played against Sevilla, he was training and flipping hell, he looks amazing. He looks sharp, really sharp. What's crazy is they showed him and then they showed Kepa and I can't really notice a difference. And it's surprising because Peter Cech is 38 years old and I expect him to be, you know, having a hurtful hip right about now. You know, maybe he can't dive as much as he could. But flipping out, he's as agile and he's as quick and he's as, as, as powerful as he's ever looked. So I can trust him. I can trust him. If on the off chance we have no goalkeeper available, we call Peter Cech, I'm pretty sure he'll do a good job for us. So honestly, this is great news. And just to... uh. Just to let you know about something else. Um, <laughs> Frank Khalid put this on Twitter. Message for Didier Drogba. Get your boots on, my friend. Obviously, because Petr Cech has been included in the squad. Why not just put Didier Drogba there as well? And Didier responded with, I'm already on my way to Cobham. <laughs> Didier. Fair play. King Diddy. King Diddy. Well done, mate. We love you. We love you always. Um, but yeah, this is the latest. Petr Cech has been included as the 26th man in our 25-man squad. And um, it would fit pretty nicely. Say if we were about to win the title. Yeah, on the off chance. On the off chance. Um, you're not putting any bets on it. But on the off chance, we're about to wrap up the league. We've got 10 minutes to go. Bring Petr Cech on. <laughs> Bring Petr Cech on to play under Frank Lampard for Chelsea. I think that would be that would be the most 2020 thing going. Now, just to wrap up the video, I want to uh, focus on one topic that I kind of briefly mentioned yesterday, but I think should deserve a little bit more attention. And that is about Mason Mount. I want to talk about Mason Mount because, um, as I said yesterday, I haven't really spoken about him. Um, and his constant inclusion in the starting eleven, yeah, and his uh, his, you know, um, he, I don't want to say favoritism, even though it might be at this stage, it might be, it really might be. But I want to bring a little bit of logic to it. I don't want to say, oh no, Mason Mount's absolutely rubbish. I don't want to see him in the team. And I also don't want to say, no, 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 he has to play every week. He is, he's good at pressing. Like I, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that. Not not this way or not that way. I want to be logical and I want to be, you know, rational with this. Um, it would be beneficial to play Mason Mount in his position. What is his position? Because we've seen him this season play as a 10. And we can blatantly say he doesn't belong there as a 10. Because a 10 needs to be technical. A 10 needs to be quick thinking. A 10 needs to be... Uh, skillful, able to dribble, able to provide the through ball very quickly, able to shoot. A number 10 is a very complex position, yeah. Um, Mason Mount has a couple of those elements. If I ask him to put a ball in the top corner, chances is going there. His accuracy is fantastic, he can shoot a ball. He's physical, he can press, I think we've, we've acknowledged that. Um, and I don't want to make that a fundamental factor as to why he's being picked in week in, week out. I, I, you know, oh, he can press. Oh, great. I'm, I'm expecting all football players to be able to press. I mean, let's be realistic. Pressing means you have to be physical. You need to have good athletic ability. You need to be able to run and be quick and close players down. I mean, that realistically, at the highest level of professional football, that should be, a, I don't want to say a basic, but it should be a standard requirement. Yeah. Um, Mason Mount can ping a nice through ball. He can shoot. He's got that in his locker. Yeah. As a 10, though, we've established he's not, doesn't suit being a number 10. Can he play on the wing? 
it's clear to see, no, he can't play on the wing either. So where do we play Mason Mount? Is it sustainable to be picking him week in, week out in the system that we're currently playing? For me, no. No, it's damaging to Mount and it's damaging to Frank Lampard. We need to change the formation if we want to play Mount every week. And we established this last season when he was playing in his position and you saw what he could do, especially at the beginning of the season. You remember his performances against Norwich, for example. I mean, it was, you know, there are games last season where we saw him in his position and he played fantastic. A 4 3 3 with an 8 is Mason Mount. That is his position. Box to box, as a number 8, you've got one holding midfielder, one defensive midfielder, one sitting back, and then you've got two midfielders just in front. Mason Mount on the left hand side of that, that is his position. Box to box, number 8 midfielder. Done. That is it. He can't do anything else. Right now, we are playing in a system where we have two in a pivot, one as a number 10, and we've got two wingers. Mason Mount does not fit into that formation whatsoever. Whatsoever. He's not a pivot, right? He can't play as a 6. He can't play as a 10. He can't play as a winger. Why is he being played every single game? It's damaging, as I've said, to Mason Mount because you are constantly playing him out of position. You're destroying his confidence when he has games like he did yesterday and against Southampton. You're giving him the uh, the idea that what he's doing is okay when in reality it's not. And that's not good for him. Now, if we're going to be switching up the system every week or two weeks, then okay. If we're going to a 4-3-3, then okay, you can play Mason Mount. But my big concern is this isn't good for Frank Lampard either. This isn't good on him. Because when he relies on this one player way too much, and he's not getting the results, that's not going to look good on Frank. And it's already started. It's already started now where we're looking at formations, we're looking at lineups every single week now, and we're going, Mason Mount is there. He's there. Now, I understand with the injuries and whatnot that we've just had. Now everyone's fit. So I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. And this is why I wanted to talk about this today. And I don't want to mention it again. I hope it's not a recurring theme. But if we are going to stick with a 4-2-3-1. And we have all of our players fit. Ziyech, Werner, Havertz, Pulisic. And we've got our two holding midfielders in the pivot. One possibly going forward as I said yesterday with Kovacic. Then Mason Mount does not belong there. Unless he comes off the bench. He you know, has attributes that you can use him for. As we've said with his physical ability. Now if we're winning a game. And we want to uh, pile on the pressure on an opponent. Or even if we're losing a game. And we want to pile pressure on an opponent. And go all out attack. And start bombarding with loads of physicality. Then okay you can stick Mason Mount on. But in order to play everyone in their best position. And to get the chemistry going. And to get some sort of consistency. In a 4-2-3-1. Mason Mount does not belong there. He doesn't belong there. And I think now with everyone fit. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. But I expect all of our new signings to be on the pitch consistently, week in, week out. That way there can be some chemistry built and that way we can get somewhere. With a starting 11 where we know this is our starting 11. And it helps him. It helps him. For him to be playing week in, week out the way that he is. And not even week in, week out. Day in, day out. This is a game every two, three days now. And he's playing consistently. I mean, it's it's not good on him. You're going to burn him out beyond belief. And at his age, that's the worst thing you can do. It's the worst thing you can do. I'm not saying leave him out altogether. Because that's now what's happening with hudson Doy, And that's not good for him. This is what I'm saying. Utilise players in their positions. The good thing about Mason is his versatility in a sense of introducing another system and using him there. As I've said, we go to a 4-3-3. We can now utilise Mason Mount. It gives us another outlet. Cool. But right now, if we are going to go with a 4-2-3-1 and that is our, that is our base, that is our foundation, especially to accommodate Akai Havertz and our two wingers with Timo Werner up top, I understand why the 4 2 3 one's being used and preferably I would stick with it. Mason Mount needs to be on the bench. Simple as that. But anyway, that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Subscribe if you are new. Hit uh, the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button. Let's try and get to 7,000 likes. Again, that is the target as always. Thank you all so much for your support. Again, for 40k, I really, really appreciate it. Onwards and upwards. Let's get to 50 and I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Take care.
and peace.